Hello, 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 my beloved learners. I hope you're enjoying physics so far. So this week we will cover experience three, which is about circular and projectile motion. So far you have only learned about velocity in one dimension. However, an object velocity can be defined in more than one dimension and can even change directions with time. Vector representations allow you to explore motion in two dimension or even more dimensions. Like displacement, velocity can be represented mathematically as a set of vector components. The components of velocity represent how vast an object is. As an example here, the example that you can see here using the Pythagorean theorem, we have how fast he's moving in the y direction. This is his velocity. And then we will analyze it or resolve it into x component and y component. So let's see more examples. Now let's ask this question. When a projectile is launched, what is done is the projectory? like changing the angle that we projected from, we have two dimensional forces, uh, the horizontal and the vertical component. It takes a para parabolic curve, like here, this kind, the parabolic trajectory is known as projectile motion. There are set of kinematic equations that can represent the projectile motion. So the object move in both direction, vertical and horizontal. We can represent it in the X and Y axis. As you can see here, differs from launching the projectile horizontally. So when I launch, launch it at an angle, it differs from launching it at uh, horizontal. Now here, the distance, the horizontal distance that the projectile is launched from is called x, which is equal to vx times t. I mean the velocity at the x-axis or the horizontal component of velocity. Now, when I think about the vertical component, what is it? The object or the ball here is only affected by what? By gravity. So we will discuss all of that in details in our uh, studying. This is the rule that we will be using. Since Vy, no V on the y-axis, it's going to be zero. So Y will equal half GT square. This is kinematic rule that we will be using to find the horizontal distance, or we are given if the object is launched at a height, a specific height. And I can use that rule to find the time it takes for the object to land also by substituting that in X. So we can change the rules as we, as we studied before in uh, the lessons that we took before. We can manipulate the rule so that we can find the unknown that we need to solve for. This is one of the examples. What other examples that we can see here? We have the inclined ramp. When you throw the ball to roll down and slide off the edge of the ramp, it will take also what a horizontal components. This is Vx. In this investigation, you will apply your rules of kinematics and conservation of energy to gain a better understanding of projectile motion. You will learn how to add vectors in two dimensions we will solve examples, the ant and the moving sidewalk. We will draw, define the problem, plan and execute. Uh, then we will evaluate and then there is an example for you to solve. 
So a projectile is an object that is moving through the air affected only by gravity. We will have many terminology to define. This here is an example of a lady who's standing at the top of a cliff and throwing a ball. And then we are resolving the vector components in each time it's taken. Modeling projectile motion. What are the rules that we will be using here? The horizontal equation of motion. Also the rules for vertical equation of motion. Graphs to math. How do I find the area? What's the area? It's the product. And then we will apply what we have learned. And then you will solve projectile motion problems. In details, as you can see, we will cover each uh, concept. Another problem is the hang time here. Define, plan, and execute, evaluate, and many, many other examples. So don't worry. Everything will be covered. You will understand it. You will master it. Wish you all the best. And have a good day. Goodbye.